dollar contract at the end of this season. This is something we talked about before. Uh, it's a possibility. Um, I've also heard rumor that he's not really favored by management right now, surprisingly enough. That's just some rumors I've heard. But uh, we'll see what that means coming up in the off season. But it's definitely a possibility. I mean, you see how much his utilization is this season. Yeah. I mean, he was he was uh, put out on a line with Boshman tonight. Um, that's happened more than once now. So, which is an absolute disaster. But I mean, somebody likes him on this team. I, I could definitely see the possibility. I just hope it's not for obvious reasons. We need to see young, younger guys go up and fill the role. Yeah, I, I hope it's not just for the same reason where I want to see some of these younger guys get some more time and able to develop on on this Ducks blue line because then you have the, the ability to put the two top pairs together and at least experiment on this bottom pairing. You're only play, playing them about 10, 12 minutes a night. And I think if you've got some young guys there mixing things up between Magna, Wilinski, Larson, and Patterson, I think that provides a lot of opportunities for the Ducks next year. So I hope not. But again, like you said, somebody likes Bieksa in this lineup, whether it be Bob Murray, whether it be Carla, whether it be a mix of both, I think it's a very strong possibility that he gets offered a one-year, one million to kind of play that seventh defenseman role. Which, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't love it, but I wouldn't hate it as long as he's not playing all eighty-two games. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, moving on to Twitter, our uh, current Forever Mighty Three Stars leaderboard leader asked, "Is it time to panic?" No. Yeah. It's not time so. to panic. It's time to uh, to get our craft together and, and figure it out as a team. They need they need to do something here and and make a change because of what we were just talking about about with this uh, this competitive playoff race right now. There's no time to breathe and take nights off. I don't think it's panic mode. I'm bringing up the standings right now because this is always something fun and scary to look at while we talk. <laughs> Considering our rivals had won tonight, we're looking at right now Vegas, San Jose, and LA are one, two, and three. Ducks right now sitting outside a playoff position. They're tied with Colorado, but Colorado's got two more wins. Um, yeah. The Colorado also has two games in hand. Yeah, They're one point behind good. LA and three behind San Jose. They need to win. Like this mm-hmm. is a this is no more screwing around, no more nights off. You got to win these home games coming up. They're playing Vancouver on Wednesday, who just got beat by LA. This is a very beatable team, and the Ducks right now may be a little fragile coming off of the hot streak and getting getting beaten up these last three games. But this is a definitely a game if you're going to pick a team to beat. Uh, the Canucks are, I mean, my God, are, are playing some of the worst hockey in the NHL. So there's no better time than now to step it up. Yeah, and I think this transitions a bit into a question that uh, Drew had on Twitter. With the, with the Ducks out of a playoff spot right now, he said, is it too late to start falling for Dolan? <laughs> uh, I, you'd have to I take think a deep so. jump yeah. off a cliff for that. It's a little too late. Yeah, I, but if the Ducks are to miss the playoffs, what are they looking for in the first round? Are they looking for forwards? Are they looking for defense with the first pick? I feel like it's probably a forward rather than a defenseman because you've got kind of those four guys, young guys in your system that you can build around. You've got some younger guys coming up. I feel like you kind of have to start building that forward depth and having guys who can come in the system in, in a couple, well, three or four years. Bob Murray's uh, always has been a guy about defense first. He's yeah. always been like, I'm not going to pass up a good defenseman. Like, that. I'm just you can never have too many of them. Like, everyone always gives him a hard time for, you know, over-loving his prospects. You know, I'm one of those guys that talks about him doing that. But, I mean, that's just the way he is. You can never have too much young defensemen. So, I mean, yeah. I, I could see him picking another defender first. But, I mean, they've went out and got some good forwards, you know, as of yeah. late. Sam Steele, Max Jones, who's highly highly touted as well. Both those guys are. Comtois has actually come out of nowhere. We talked about him many times on the show. And now we're talking about, you know, the Ducks are going to go full bore into trying to signing uh, Troy Terry once his season's done. Um, how do you feel? You're a prospects guy. What's Who's coming up after Dolan? I mean, that's all I've heard is everyone talking about Dolan coming into the NHL, you know, right away on a bad team. Um, who do you see being plucked after him? Yeah, I feel like the Ducks won't even get into a position where they'd be able to pick that high unless they got very, very lucky and won the lottery. I mean, this is a team, if they miss the playoffs, they're just going to barely miss the playoffs. Uh, but as for guys right after Dolan, it's pretty much Andrei Svechnikov from Barry. And Philip Zadina from Halifax, those are the top three guys right now. The Ducks would be lucky to get any of those guys. They could step into the lineup probably next season and be guys who can contribute to your top six. Again, I don't think the Ducks are going to get to that point. They're most likely, if they if they do miss the playoffs, going to get a pick around, around 15, 10 to 15, depending on how bad they are or if they get some favorable draws in the lottery. 
So it puts you in a position to grab some good guys. Um, I think a guy like an Akil Thomas or Dominic Bach are good guys, good wingers, and guys who can play center that you can draw at that position. I'm not going to go in-depth on the draft. I just think there are some good players you can get at that point, but I think we would all love the Ducks to just make the playoffs and not even have to worry about that. Yeah, no, I mean, get in. I would I would hope to God they get in um, in the top three in the division. That way they're not sitting in a wild card and having to play someone like Nashville in the first round. That's scary. Yeah, uh, especially the way Nashville kind of manhandled them through 50 minutes of, or 55 minutes almost of that game uh, a couple nights ago. Yeah. Uh, so what do we got? What do we got next on Twitter? We have like a ton of questions today, which is great, <laughs> but we still have I some love more it. on I Twitter. I love the participation from everybody in chat, everyone on Twitter. We love it. Yeah. You guys. Thanks for tuning in and helping it's us a, out here and, and, uh, and, and checking it out. It's a nice, refreshing change from the last two uh, away games where I think everybody was just kind of disappointed. They were done. <laughs> and yeah, they were they were done. Yeah, but um, Kyle on Twitter said, "Where would we be without Gibby?" And uh, I think we've kind of mentioned this multiple times. The Ducks would probably be far, well out of the playoffs. Probably a lottery team if Gibson wasn't playing the way he's been playing this season. Yeah, I could see him right around that uh, Edmonton Vancouver bubble area right there, right? You know, yeah. all the way down. Has to be thirty yeah, wins. How many last... games has he won on his own? Really, and even Miller yeah, to the same no, extent, true. right? So, um, let's see. Chase has a couple of questions on Twitter. I don't know if this is a question, but I'll read it anyway. He said, "People need to chill. BX is most likely not coming back next year, and Boschman is retiring, so we're likely going to have a new third D pairing next year. Just bear with it until the season is over." I feel like that's half right and could be full right, depending on if the Ducks re-sign BX. We just went into a full discussion about that, but. I, I kind of agree with him. I feel like people should just chill out a bit. I mean, of course, we would love to see BX and Boschman not in the lineup right now, but we kind of got to deal with it, at least for this season. Boschman is not going to be back next year. BX, I think it's 50-50. It's up in the air whether he'll be back or not. And if he is, he won't be playing the same role he's playing this season. So I feel like people got to just calm down a bit. The Ducks are still young. That blue line still has a lot of promise, and I think next season it should be a lot better in what they can kind of put out on the ice in regards to the blue line. Oh, I absolutely agree with that, hundred percent. I'm on, I'm on board with you there. Uh, Chase again saying, "Do you see Anaheim signing any of the current fourth line guys? Most have expiring contracts at the end of the season, or should they bring up some guys from San Diego?" So again, we kind of talked about this a bit, but do you see them re-signing like Chimera, Kelly, Grant, Vermat? Vermat hasn't played in a while, it seems like. So do you see them re-signing any of those guys? Um, no, and uh, other than Grant. I think yeah. Grant's the only one getting a contract, as we said. I said earlier, there's there's no way. I don't see anyone being uh, anyone else being signed. Vermette's been, we barely see Vermette anymore. Um, and Kelly and Tremere, I just don't feel like they fit in. And you you can maybe see one of them maybe being signed, but they're old, man. Like I yeah. know that I'm in my mid 30s, but for, <laughs> for professional hockey players, they're hockey that's old. old. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're hockey old. They're almost 39, 40 years old. That's old. Time yeah, to I, hang them up. And, and on the same trend of that topic, we get a question from Jacob, or just kind of an observation. Uh, he said he wasn't able to attend the live show, so we're answering his question here. He said, just curious, your thoughts on Grant being a valuable fourth-line center. Seems to contribute offensively and win face-offs. Would seem to be a good fit for younger forwards to work with his size factors there as well. I agree with him. I think he's a serviceable fourth-line. I think, I mean, his numbers are a bit inflated from where he's been positioned in the line, especially earlier in the season, but... I can't complain. I mean, as a fourth-line center, I think he brings more to the table than what Vermet brings. He brings a little bit more offense, uh, brings a little bit more hustle, I, I think, as well, which I, I guess is an intangible, so I can't really can't really rely on that too much. But, yeah, I, I think he is a more reliable fourth-line center, and I feel like he could be the Ducks' fourth-line center next season with Wagner no longer on the team and with Vermet and Kelly probably not coming back. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, a fourth-liner doesn't really move the needle either way for you. Yeah. And, and, and unless you're rolling four lines where with like like high level scoring guys in there, which no one just has the cap space to do, there's probably just not enough talent to go around at that point either to have you know a deadly fourth line. Yeah. Um, it's hard enough to roll three lines. Uh, the, the, that line you just want them to do the, the hockey cliches: pucks on net, pucks in deep, don't make mistakes on your shift, get off the ice. Like that's that's what the fourth line's for. Uh, maybe to ride a couple of young guys on there too, get them some NHL experience with a veteran. I think Grant is definitely going to get a contract back. Um, he's he's loved by uh, Randy Carlisle and you know Bob Murray's buddies with Carlisle. Obviously, he fired him and brought him back. 
So if they like Grant and uh, they want to sign him, he will. And I don't have a problem at all. I don't think it really moves the needle up or down. Yeah. And, and kind of sum it up all here, we have a, a final question. Moves away from the Ducks a bit, but Phil asks, aside from the Ducks, who is your cup dark horse? I'll, I'll kick it off here because uh, I think I have one that is, I guess it would be a dark horse. I mean, they're just hanging on to a playoff spot. But I think Philadelphia is a team that could stir things up in the playoffs Especially, I mean, they're going to look their their first round matchups probably probably going to be against Pittsburgh. That's going to be a fun one to watch. But I feel like just the talent they have on that team with Giroux, Kucherier, Voracek, they got some good young defensemen. And you don't always need to have that elite goaltender in the playoffs. You just have to get a guy who's playing hot. And I think Marax is a guy who can step up to the occasion and play well for them. I would have them as my dark horse. I don't think anybody else really fits into that. I was going to say Winnipeg, but they're not really a dark horse considering how well they've been playing. So in my opinion, I'd have to pick Philadelphia. I'm interested to see who you would say. You know, my my pick, I mean, obviously everyone's got to go through Nashville to get out of yeah. the West. But I really feel like everyone is doing what, uh, including myself, sleeping on Vegas again. I mean, yeah. sleep on Vegas all you want. You know, they're going through a rut. They're now, they've, went, they've now won three in a row. They just beat Philadelphia, as you just talked about, who's, who's playing really well this season. I, I mean, that's tough. That's so tough for Vegas to come in. But I don't think they have like a, a great chance to win a cup. But if you're talking like a dark, a dark horse chain where guys are just – maybe they're going to sleep on these guys. I mean, there's a chance there. They've, they've done everything they possibly can to surprise everybody this season around the, around the National Hockey League. Everyone's caught Vegas flu at one point going into that arena. Who knows what's going to happen in a seven-game series? It's a lot easier to pin down guys and read plays and read systems in four games. But if you're going to have me roll the dice on somebody, you know, no pun intended, I would have to say Vegas. You can't sleep on them. Yeah, and I kind of forgot it here, but I want to throw in some love for the Florida Panthers because they're not currently in a, in a playoff spot. But I feel like if they could get in, they could be a scary team because, I mean, they're going to play either Washington, probably Pittsburgh, or even Tampa Bay if they get into that final wild card spot. But they've got a good young team with Barkov, Trocek, Ekblad. If Luongo can pull together the way he's been playing this season, there's no question he can make a help them make a long push. I feel like they could be a team that could scare a lot of a lot of guys if they got into that last spot. Um, we were done, but we got a late question here from Manuel. He said, when do you pull the plug on the shutdown line, either like this season or mid next year if nothing changes? We got to see how Kessler's doing at the end of training camp, yeah. uh, at the end of the summer. We got to see how he's doing. Um, he's been working really hard to come back, as everyone knows. We read the articles about him with uh, all the pain he's been going through. You know, the giant needles he's been using to uh, to recover and uh, those, you know heal those muscles and stuff in his hip. Learning how to skate again, learning how to walk again, all that stuff. Um, you got to see, and that that line drives through him. I mean, it's yeah. just the way it is. And these guys are having a down year, and they know it. They got a lot to live up to uh, for next season. I mean, Cogliano signed a contract. Kessler's got that big contract. Um, so has got a couple of seasons left on his deal. Uh, they need to turn it around. I don't think that they're going to get split up or the, have the plug pulled necessarily. I think things got to be really bad. It's got to be real bad. If things don't change, I think you have to mix it up. But uh, I think it all rides in how Kessler comes into training camp. Yeah. And just to end it off here, uh, we don't have any more questions, but I wanted to end it off with some of the quotes from the players and, and Randy Carlisle before uh, before we get into this. Now, for you, so you guys know for, for future shows, we're actually working on being able to get some of these audio clips in here, so by the time we get to this point in the show, we could plug some of these in. Uh, we don't have it right now, so I'll just read them off, but this one's from Getzlaff. He said, it's not a frustration with our effort, it's a frustration with the fact that we're having trouble understanding what it takes, shift in, shift out every period. That's the frustrating part we have to address to make sure we're doing that on a consistent basis. I think he kind of hits the nail on the head. Just the fact that there things aren't really going for anybody on this team. And it really just seems like they're all kind of confused with what they're supposed to be doing, shift in, shift out. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see that change up come against Vancouver. I mean, yeah. St. Louis obviously is leaps and bounds better than Vancouver. But, um, I mean, let's see how you guys play against the worst in the NHL. Yeah, exactly. Prove it. Let's see if they may see the changes. Yeah, and then the last one's from Randy Carlisle, and <laughs> I'm I feel like he's copping out a little bit here, but he says you have to give them credit, but we need to understand there's a certain type of game that's being played right now. We've given the opposition too many gifts in the last little while. Those are mental breakdowns that have to be corrected. I feel like he's pushing it a bit on the players. 
uh, in that instance. I, I mean, there's a, yes, there are mental breakdowns. Yes, they're giving the opposition some gifts, but uh, 